Hi everyone, I'm Alistair Ben and you're watching Expressive Photography. In this video, I want to ask the question, is there such a thing as a perfect shot? And really by that I mean, in a particular place, at a particular time, is there something that you can really dial in to say, yes, that is it, that is the perfect shot for this particular situation? Um, I think that's something that quite a lot of us will struggle with. Um, coming to somewhere, maybe at an odd time of the day, it's currently about half past two in the afternoon. The reason I've come out here at the moment is the tide is at its highest. And I was looking to try and find some compositions of some beautiful rocks that I know just uh, out of shot here. So let's uh, dive back to the studio, have a look at the circumstances, have a look at the scene, and you should be able to decide for yourself what you perhaps you would have done in this particular situation. And you can no doubt take great pleasure in telling me why I've done it wrong. So uh, yeah, let's uh, get back to the studio. It's very windy out here right now and it's not the easiest place to talk. So uh, yeah, is there such a thing as a perfect shot? Well, it's certainly warmer in here than it was out there. Um, right, so what makes a perfect shot? These are the conversations that I want to have today. Now, first of all, let's look at the actual scene. Let's look at the video that I took while I was out there. It was the early afternoon. I was out there specifically for a high tide, and that was the time. It wasn't about the light. It was about the time of day that was important. It was quite hazy, but it was also quite bright. Um, the swell was coming in at quite a good rate, so there was quite a lot of energy coming into the scene. So if we look at what I was pointing my camera at, we are seeing an interaction between static rocks and moving water, a classic combination. Um, this is not a new concept by any means. So what were the decisions that I made at the time? Well, first of all, we have to decide what is in and what is out. And that is ground zero. That is what composition is, is what to include and what not to include. For me, and if I just grab up one of these, uh, this is the very first raw file that I, I made. It was this, this rock area in the foreground was really what caught my eye. There were some quite good streaks coming down the cliffs on the left hand side with the bigger wave sets. However, these were much more intermittent, shall we say. The foreground rocks and water were the things that really caught my eye. Because of the time of day and the quality of the light um, and a kind of distant headland um, in the distance there, I, I decided to not include the sky. It wasn't adding anything in my mind. So what to include, what not to include. I have targeted the key rocks at the foreground that were the ones that I liked the most. Um, so what else can we do? Well, the second thing was I decided to shoot in a black and white preview. There was quite a monochromatic feel to this scene. There wasn't a lot of color in there. And by making a black and white preview on the back of the camera, it allowed me to visualize something that you don't see with your eyes. I made a video, which I'll link to up here, which is what I consider one of the most powerful things we can do with our photography, which is using the black and white preview button. So I've got a bunch of black and white images. Uh, the next thing to decide was aspect ratio. Cropping in camera is a really good way of uh, eliminating things that we don't want to include in the frame. And what I'm going to do is look at some of these images and say, well, what, what was the impact of that crop and what was I excluding? So that will be coming up shortly. So what to include, what not to include, essentially the composition. Aspect ratio is a fundamental part of composition. Anyone who shoots six by six or four by five or even three to two on a full frame DSLR or something similar, we, aspect ratio is part of our craft. Uh, the black and white preview, of course, allows us to uh, kind of slightly abstract what we're seeing as well. And the final thing that I think was super important here was shutter speed. Whenever we have something moving in the frame, choosing a shutter speed that accentuates the feel that we want to convey within the photograph, that is going to be a powerful thing too. 
if we dive back in here, I think now this folder has both JPEGs and RAW files in it. I shoot both, um, mainly for teaching purposes. It's just easier sometimes. Uh, so all of the JPEGs are marked in red and all of the RAW files are still gray. Shutter speed and flowing water are always going to be uh, down to luck. Whatever word we want to use for that, serendipity or... Uh, or timing, whatever we want to. If we want to be egotistic, it's how perfectly we time uh, the shutter speed. Um, so shutter speed is massively important here. And I started off with an eighth of a second. And as you can see, even at an eighth of a second, there's quite a lot of motion in this scene. Uh, the wash, the water was really rushing around. And sometimes you just have to take a couple of images to kind of evaluate what the combination of focal length and shutter speed is going to have on the resultant aesthetic, I suppose. Uh, so I can I actually made it a half of a second, so I made it a fraction quicker. And we stuck with a quarter with a half a second until I decided to go for eight seconds. As soon as I put my case 10 stop, filter on the camera. I, I, I guess I was somewhat dissatisfied with the faster shutter speeds and fast half a second to me is a faster shutter speed for this type of scene. Um, I just wasn't really getting the flow that I think I wanted. Uh, so there was an evaluation in the field of what is what am I seeing on the back of my camera. And this is the digital photographer's dream, is we can see in real time on the back of the camera. We're not, we're not shooting film, we're not waiting two weeks before we actually see what we're photographing. And I think we should use that information to make decisions and make choices. So I think when it comes to digital photography, we have far more opportunity to evaluate and change and tweak um, particularly shutter speeds and compositions to, to dial in. So theoretically, we should have a much higher hit rate with digital photography than we would with film photography. Unless, of course, you're a complete master. So I kind of stuck with a longer shutter speed. This eight seconds seemed to be working for me. I was happy with a more simple uh, scene. Whenever you have arrangements of rocks, adding more texture, flow, directionality, geometry, um, detail, contrast. When we add all of those things to an already ge geometric scene, you know, the way these rocks just sit on this canvas of atmosphere is much more pleasing to the eye than perhaps a busier, more chaotic, uh, you know, if we had a 20th of a second shutter speed here. So I kind of carried on evolving this scene and, and I, I went to two seconds, the, the energy of, once I realized that the bigger sets were coming through um, and a two second shutter speed still gave me quite a lot of atmosphere, but you know, definitely gave me more in the way of flow on the rocks at the back. So I'm, I kind of like that one. I'm gonna mark that one. Uh, so yeah, I've gone through and I've actually marked some of the scenes that I, probably liked the most. Um, the other thing we should never forget is that our preference will change. Any conversation around, is there a perfect photograph, has to take into consideration that we have the right to change our mind. And I think this is a really important learning point, really, is that we shouldn't get too hung up about perfection and we shouldn't get too hung up about the concept of, uh, where have I failed? Um, because sometimes you might find an image a year from now that really resonates with you. So I think in real terms, I was playing around with what to include and what to not include. Uh, I did get to a point where I went for these far more simple compositions. The less content that you put in a frame, the more space you have in the frame. Um, and I think this is where our variability comes into play. If we are able to process busyness because we have a, the mindset to do so, then we can make busier photographs. 
if we have a busy mind and we're looking for an escape, a way to try and find something to calm us down, then something like this with more space around it is definitely going to be easier on the eye. Probably within this collection of images, I think I took 18 different uh, comp well, variations of composition, shutter speeds, aspect ratios. I took about 18 different versions of this scene over the space of about maybe an hour, 45 minutes, an hour. And I recognize that there are some of them that resonate today with me more than others. And there's some that I didn't particularly like that are speaking to me more now than perhaps they did when I came back from shooting. I think what we can do here is I'm going to find one that speaks to me now. Uh, I do like this one. Uh, I think this kind of encapsulates the, the spirit of what I wanted to try and do. So this is a 13 second exposure. So this is one of the, the short, the, the longer exposures. I have, um, put a square aspect ratio. It's in black and white. So it's a black and white long exposure square, uh, photograph. Now, without being too cheesy, that usually equates to something that people will like. Um, it's the classic definition of fine art landscape photography, I guess, black and white square uh, long exposures. Uh, so maybe that's a little bit cheesy, a little bit trite, but at the same time, it's still important to me. Now, there is almost no colour in this scene at all. I mean, it is it's almost monochromatic anyway. So I'm, I'm having to do absolutely nothing to make this black and white. In terms of uh, processing this thing, the brighter it goes, the more open it's going to feel. Uh, the more I open the shadows, the more accessible that top left-hand corner will become. I don't want this to get too crunchy. I don't want it to get too dark. Um, and these images need so little in the way of processing. And you end up with something like this that I think for me is calming. It is also geometric, it's angular, um, it's very atmospheric. So this in this moment in time is an image that I really like. There are others in the collection that I do also like and you know, some of the panoramic aspect ratios that were very open as well. But in answer to the question, is there a perfect photograph? The answer is probably unfortunately going to be it's either the one your mate took, uh, stood next to you that you didn't notice, <laughs> that will attract you. And the second definition is probably you will think that there's an image that you didn't take that you could have. Now I took 18 versions of this scene and maybe if I'd taken 20, I might have actually dialed it in perfectly and got exactly what I was wanting at the time. But the bottom line with all of this is that I'm sat here looking at these photographs and there's quite a selection of images that I do like because I was conscious of black and white or color. I was conscious of my compositions in terms of do I include the sky? Do I include the left and right? And we'll actually go uh, quickly. If I go to the full version of this, you will see why it was cropped into a square. There was including stuff on that top left hand corner that I just don't want. So as soon as I um, move it into a square, I'm simplifying, I'm getting rid of something that I didn't want. And this was the biggest challenge in this particular scene was to get what I wanted whilst eliminating the stuff that I didn't really want to have to compose. So choice of black and white or color, choice of aspect ratio, choice of whether to include the sky or not, and the choice of shutter speed are the four considerations that I made in this particular scenario to come up with a version of these photographs that I felt was most pleasing at the time. Uh, hopefully you've found this to be of some interest. Um, 
we're very lucky now that we have the coast just down the down the road from us and I can nip down pretty much any time I want. So you can expect plenty of outdoor videos from me coming up over the summer and into the autumn. Um, and yeah, I hope you've enjoyed this. Um, anything I've missed, anything that you think you could have done better, um, your comments and thoughts are always welcome. And of course, please hit the subscribe button and give us an old thumbs up because uh, that helps the algorithm. Thank you for watching. Tune in again next week at the same time for more from me. Thank you very much and goodbye.